Aloha. It's your boy Pope. I'm back here, man, to let you guys know about the My Invitational and how it really goes down. Never give up yeah. anything you do in life because I never did. I'm on my way, I'm going how you doing? Just to see kids like Austin, Pope. He knows where to be. I'm on my way, I'm going. Way. Oh, I'm going Everybody trying to make it in their separate ways. How can we do that and help each other? Twenty nineteen, my invitational is up and running right now. Everybody going crazy. I know it's that exciting time of the year. Thanksgiving, Maui, all the best teams. But I realize not everybody knows what really goes down at the Maui Invitational. Fun fact: I actually played in it twice with the host team, Shamanai Super Swords. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you guys through how it really is to play in the My Invitational. We got all the behind the scenes footage, the highlights. Shout out to my guy, Maddie Southard out there, going crazy. My teammate at the Maui, salute to you. And Shamanai, he filmed it all. I wasn't really locked in on it like that during that time. Now I'm back two years later. I haven't seen this footage in a little while, so this is gonna be dope for me to take a trip down memory lane. So you guys are gonna be able to view that with me. So let's get it going. Starting it off. Okay, we was at the airport. B Rabbit, Masa Swain, Big Sheev, Dylon, Nick, Kane. Man. So everybody, when you first get into the My Invitational, you get you gotta get that flight. You know, shout out to Hawaiian Airlines hooking us up. JB Smooth right there. Okay. Look, it got the fresh cut. Hey, when you get ready to go to Maui, you gotta make sure the cut is smooth, man, because you're gonna be on TV, you need that. Tyler Cartano, Grant, B-Rabbit, Brett. There go the kid. Ooh, hoo, hoo. locked in, boy. Papa Villa, Coach Kyle Milligan. Shout out to Coach Kyle, man. Shout out to my guy. Driving over to Poly, get to Maui. Man, when you step foot in this gym, it's like, it's magical. You see all the people that have come through, come through this gym. Okay, then we gotta do, um, we're the host team, so we do Maui uh, clinic invitations with all the dope kids um, from the Maui area and all the boosters kids. Put on a whole little camp. It's super hot. It's super hot during that day. Oh yeah. Taking a trip down to Maui, right all where the, uh, all the hotels are, where you stay. Ooh wee, going to get the glasses fitting. Oh, this is huge for Maui. You, you, get, your, you get a free pair of Maui gems because the tournament is sponsored by Maui. Um, everybody picks out their different style, their different swag. Okay, going crazy. Team picture with the, with the, uh, with the Maui surfboard. Got Becca in there, the trainer. Shout out to Becca, man. Ooh, got me a JB cheesing. Oh my God. The dance contest. Okay, so, so this is huge for the event, man. It's crazy. So what we do is two players from each of the teams that come, I think there's eight total teams, two of the t uh, players um, from each team, they do luau style dancing. You do the luau style dancing in front of um, actual people like hula dancers and all that stuff from the island, and they teach you how to do the dance. They take the best player from each team and they go into the final day when they have all the boosters and everybody, ESPN is there and it's a competition. And then after you complete that, you then do the crazy dance contest where it's more freestyle. A cornhole. And, and they say during this, during these Maui events, it's like if whoever wins these events usually wins in the actual games, like these events um, actually like go through the uh, course of the game. So we won cornhole. So it says a lot. Okay. Ooh, we glasses fitting and getting laid for our pictures. For our, are we getting ready for lunch? Big Nate. Man, I can't, I can't even tell you, uh, put in the words, this is making me feel, this is unreal. Best time of the year, best tournament ever. Oh, food is crazy. The food is crazy. Oh my God, oh, the intros, okay, so now it's the dinner part where the big boosters and everybody walks. This is the moment you live for. You walk in with all these teams, got your, your fight songs playing, 
got your black, got your Maui gems on, you know, and you're with your brothers that you work hard with, man. And you hear that anthem come on when you come on, you hear the Wi Fi bow, like da 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 I remember my first year, my teammate Rondell, he told me about the experience, but I didn't really know. Shout out to Ron G. I didn't know how dope that experience was. So like when I was in it, he looked at me when we were walking in as the intro, like da 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 da. He looked at me, we just started both dying laughing because it was just like, bro, we're really here. Like we're getting ready to play on ESPN. Like we're really here. Oh, okay, this is beautiful, man. Do the national, it's like their little national thing. Everybody's singing, welcoming, welcoming. Aloha. Then we got, okay, so I didn't make it to the dance because I, I was there for more of the hoop, but my guy, Big Nate. Shout out to Big Nate, man. Shout out to Big Nate, dog. Because that boy, first of all, let me tell you a little backstory about this. Seven foot two, Big Nate Pollard. Shout out to my guy. The first year he got into the dance contest, they aired it all over ESPN. He lost to Joe Barry in a championship. Sorry, Big Nate. But we felt like he got cheated. Like he, he, he for sure won. It was just because it's North Carolina politics, politics. But Nate was coming back for year two for redemption. So this year was very serious. It was no smiles, none of that. It was like, we're going in and we're gonna get this dub, man. Like we went into it, like we're gonna get this dub. Like the night prior to this, he was in my room, me, JB, Masa, Nick, y'all remember. And he was making sure that Millie Rock was sturdy. You know what I'm saying? He was like, what do I do right here? The whole game plan, we broke down the film. Like if we was getting ready to play Notre Dame, we broke down the Maui, like, ah, Nate, you didn't win last year because you did this. This how you gonna do it this year, you know? So anybody that knows, they know how serious this moment was for him and our team. Look at Millie Rock sturdy, Cat Daddy, hey. Bro, when he moved, he did the moonwalk. This wasn't even a part of the show. Like, I didn't know he was going to do that. I didn't teach him that. Well, 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 <laughs> both of these gentlemen. Big name. But Man. now it's time to decide. Or should it be it in the back. Nate Pollard? Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. We're here. Yeah, Big Nate. Man. Coach Bovary. <laughs> You just got a perfect three for three. Let's go. Three for three, baby. Our winner for this year is Nate Pollard from Chaminade. Let's go, man. This is crazy. Little skinny Nate, man. Oh, this is dope. The fire. If you ever had me do anything like that, it would be a wrap. <laughs> so they have the coaches panel at this point. After all the funny games and all the celebration, the food, we have coaches panel. ESPN Dan Dockage was there and all the media. Each coach talks about their team dynamic, what they see for the season and what they see with their matchup. And they usually sit the coaches kind of together. So it's pretty cool to see like, you know, your coaches talking about their schemes and what they feel about the team and the boosters to kind of hear that too. So for me, Dan Dockage, which was the ESPN analyst, he tweeted out after watching our team practice, this Chaminade team is gonna win a game in this tournament. He tweeted it out. So that was like the first kind of thing. And you know, obviously people retweeted it, but then he said it on the stage with all the coaches. <laughs> and that kind of opened up like the target on our back, like, um, no, you're not about to beat us like that. You're not about to do that. He can't, and all the coaches was like, well, if they win in the game, it ain't gonna be against us, you know? So it was pretty cool to hear that. I bet one of our producers today, you win a game in this tournament. Now, I'm just telling you, I watch your team. This is your biggest team, correct? Well, it's, this is the biggest team we've ever had, um, starting with our 6'6 six, six point guard. Um, our 6'6 six, six point guard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hearing Coach, you know, in front of all these prestigious coaches you got up here, started off by saying, like, it starts with our 6'6 six, six point guard. You know, it kind of it kind of like put a stamp like it's time to really get to work, you know. So now after all that stuff, it's time to go to work, man. Like it's all that stuff. You kind of got to transfer that energy that you had as like media and all this swaggy stuff. to now it's like you can't make a fool out of yourself. You got to go get it done. So it's us getting ready, game planning, everybody locking in, getting their warm up ready. 
getting they getting they shoes, everybody listening to their music, getting their zone. Oh yeah, there I go, there I go, there I go. And another thing, every game, especially in the Maui, and it don't matter Maui or not, I would always ask people before the pregame what you got in your headphones. And I need to know kind of what's in your what's in your bag for the day. I don't know, you might be like I had teammate Dylan. Shout out to Dylon, he told me he was listening to some Slipknot. You know what I'm saying? I was like, okay, uh, going crazy. Like, I don't listen to Slipknot, but if that's what gets you going, because I could hear it in the van, like, da -da 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 -da. and I'm like, yo, and I'm like, yo, okay. And then, you know, me, I'm more of a Sade, you know, Lauren Hill, Drake, slow it down, like on the on the game days. He was real, like, da -da 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 -da. I'm like okay, everybody got to get in their zone, man. So, much love to my guy. So now, it's showtime, highlight time, baby. Highlight Sports Productions, baby. Highlight Sports Productions, baby. Hey, let's go. Highlight time, baby. Another spectacular yeah, day. baby, ESPN. Taking on host Shamanah Shamanah versus Michigan. The the there go the boy. Shamanah. You see it, number zero? Okay, this play right here was crazy because we knew they were switching, and I had the big on me. I was being guarded by uh, Mo Wagner. Uh, shout out to Mo Wagner in the NBA, you know what I'm saying? Rejected the ball screen and had to get to my bread and butter to floaty off the glass. Chocolate flow. Got right to it on that one. Chocolate float. That one was more of like a like a vanilla one though. That one was smooth. That one was smooth. Okay, Notre Dame game. Got to the 10. I can't even tell people like the the technique to get a putback dunk. It's just all off instinct. So he shot it coming from the corner. So I have, you know, you have a knack for reading the ball. And I was able to just hit a seam and nobody boxed me out. And I was able to get freaky, get showtime one time. Replay me. Hey! Yeah, Bonzi, Bonzi Kosen didn't box out. They're all American, Bonzi. In box out, Bonzi. I know coach getting on you. <laughs> uh, this one, we was breaking down this set. Three seconds left on the shot clock. Grant pitched it back to me and kind of tried to sell the call a little bit and knock down the tray, knock down the tray. Melo, you know. I thought it was a foul. Look, everybody on the bench is like, yo, like, that's a foul. But, you know, when you're playing in my Invitational and you're the underdog, you're Shamanai, you're going to be playing against top teams and you're not going to get calls. It is what it is. It's my junior year, UConn. Put back. See, I just got a knack for getting putbacks. That's crazy. After I'm watching these highlights, I never really noticed that. You can't even scout. You can't even scout that. Okay, out of bounds play against Tennessee. Came off the screen. Good screen, Ron G. Tat, tat, tat. A ball screen. So right here, I have Matt Farrell on me, which as great of a point guard as he is, me being 6'6", six, six, and him being maybe 5'11", I was able to use, um, use it to my advantage right here. Get to the outside, put him on my back for a second. At that point, it's just like, it's a baby. Mouse in the house. Different terms. Get your kid off the get the kid out the street. We'll talk about that later. And so this play right here, another one against North Carolina. And I was able to get my hands on the basketball and get a second chance bucket and put some momentum. It was man, what? It's 13 to 13 to 18 against North Carolina? You tripping, man. What you talking about? And I hit him with the flex too. I was like, hey. Looked at the bench, my moms, everybody was in there. It was, I looked at them like Burbank, like. I did that for us, you feel me? All them nights I was at McCambridge and Park and Rec, like I get the flex on the camera against North Carolina, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so right here, skip through that lane, filet, you know what I'm saying? Filet, filet me. And what's crazy is I gotta rewind it. It looked like another one of those fouls that I tell you that we don't be getting in the Maui, cause it looked like I got hit upside my head and one, whatever. Another chocolate float. Whew. That's one of my favorite, that's one of my favorite moves I've ever done in the Maui. Right here, like a fake that way, rip through, stop on a dime, and then tap tap. Oh, this is, my, this, this is a lot of people's favorite play of me. I got a lot of favorites, but this one's tough. Cause you know, it's defense, turning defense into offense and using my energy. 
dude tried to euro me and he tried to lay me on uh, UConn Jalen Adams. You know, I gave him the Mutombo. No, no, no. No, no, no. I returned to sender. Bill Wallen would say, yeah, big fella. And Rondell gets it, brings it up the court. I don't give up on the play and think, you know, we turn defense into offense. Went straight downhill at the big. And one. And one. Let's go. This one was a good, uh, good action right here. And I kind of slipped right there and I should have dunked it. But, you know, Two points is two points, like John Wooden would always say, you know? Oh yeah, kick out from Karen Shastri, a little in and out hesitation. And at six nine would say, a treyway. It's a treyway. Okay, this one, this is one of my personal favorites too, because I got Joe Barry, and they hyped up Joe Barry so much before this game, dog. Like I was seeing it all over the internet, consensus all American. So for me, that's my opportunity to be like. We'll see. Yeah, man, I, I was able to get a, a, a post entry and me being 6'6", six, six, like I said, you know, I had a baby on me. That's food, <laughs> it's food. Three ball corner pocket. We work on that at practice all the time. Threes, please. Threes, please. <laughs> so, year, my senior year, we played against Cal Berkeley in the seventh, eighth place game. We lost to Michigan, we lost to Notre Dame. Um, put up a good fight, just didn't make it happen. So it's three games in three days. But I knew going into this game, and I said it on the interview, that if we beat, if we play Cal Berkeley out of all the playing field, I feel like we can beat them just off the base off a of matchup. And my best friend, Ty Bennett, Ty be the GOAT, you know what I'm saying? Bad. He went to Cal Berkeley at this time, and I told him before the, before the tournament, we was gonna beat him if we played him. And he was like, get out of here, knock it off, you're not. So to set the stage for you, you know, it was real personal. I got family that went to Cal Berkeley. My best friend went to Cal Berkeley. It's like, okay, it's personal, you know? And I don't, and this is technically speaking, this Cal Berkeley game is my last Mount Invitational game. So I could walk out of here playing North Carolina loss, UConn loss, Tennessee loss, Michigan loss, Notre Dame loss, Cal Berkeley loss. I went 0 for 6 into Maui. Did I, did I leave my stamp on the university? Like, it, it, I don't know, you know? And there's a lot to think about. Do I want, how do I want to leave our legacy? So going into the game, it was the earliest game because they had the championship semifinal and they had like the seventh, eighth place game at like eight o'clock in the morning. I had little to no breakfast. We didn't get no sleep from just getting our butts kicked by Michigan the night before by like 40. So like for me, it's like, I gotta flip, gotta flip all that energy around and they have to focus on the task at hand, which is the Cal Berkeley Bears. And they had lost two games as well. So, hey, let's run it. <laughs> Only thing we can do is run it. We gotta run our fade and see who come out on top. So right here in the shot clock, and I was able to hit the seam and get my shoulder in front of them and then use my 6'10 wingspan for a smooth chocolate lefty float. Heading right into halftime, going up 10. You could see, see it? You could see as soon as I went in, look at their heads. They're, look at the, the clock ended, they took the ball out. Their heads are down, the coaches are upset. Everybody's looking like, that's a momentum shift right there. That's momentum. Uncle Mo. So this one, I was able to hit a seam, drive down the lane and the, ooh, the slow-mo. I was able to no look it to Brett. That was beautiful. That was beautiful execution. Right on the money. Put it in his pocket. I drew two right there. I should have been one. Oh, and the flex. <laughs> the bench, the whole bench flexing, yo. We was all lit. Right here, five minutes left. I'm in triple double territory and we're up by 21. And they're guarding, they're they're in a pressure situation. So they're guarding us full court. So I was able to get downhill and attack the big. And you see they did a good drop or else I was gonna pass. And I attacked his body. Should have been an and one. He went vertical though. Laid him, flex, whole bench going crazy flexing. You see, it's a, it's a, it's a momentum, it's a culture. Coach Bovere, oh, he did a slow-mo on him. That man right there is the GOAT. Bad. Right here, we got him in the bag. Now it's just putting more salt on the wound at this point. We did a flip screen, Braden set the flip and the bucket. Look at the bench. Look at the, and then look at me. 
Oh my God, you're as good as your leader is, man. And you could see, you could see how at that point where I was, where I was at with it. And one, the whole bench flexing, got Masa, everybody going crazy flexing, got the, got the red shirts flexing, got crowd, got boosters flexing. And then me looking straight at the camera, me mugging. Mm. Big Nate with the flex. Flex on swole, baby. Ah. <laughs> right here, it's they're announcing us getting our first win. There's not much time left. The announcers gassing me up. And then after that, party time after you get a win. Last Maui win, you gotta celebrate. Why, what else are you gonna do? You, you just beat a Pac-12 team by almost 30 points. I think we deserve a little bit of celebration after getting our butts kicked a couple times, you know? So we went ballistic. And once Coach Bobert got in there, we all lost it. We lost it. It was like, good night. Let's go to sleep, you know? like. Storybook over, and he and he's not and and Coach Boverde is always a mellow guy. He's very monotone. So to see him like screaming and going crazy, that's like big for us. You know what I'm saying? That's huge. So we see it and we're like we're fired up. You know, we're jumping around. He look we we hugging each other. It's lit. <laughs> Morning star. We jumping, bro. Oh my god. Bro, I'm about to start crying. This is crazy, like, man. And oh, then we got bro in there. We got, so one of the dudes, <laughs> one of the dudes that worked the security lines, he was rooting for us out of all teams because he knew we were the underdogs. So every game we played, he would say like, man, come on guys, like, I'm rooting, pulling for y'all, you almost got it. So when we won, he came in, was happy, and went ballistic. So we grabbed him and put him in part of the party too. Oh my God, it's like too much to even talk. And then John Beeline came in and talked to us. I was the coach of Michigan. He was a former Division II coach. And he was just telling us about good team and great team. You see me right there. He gave me, he gave me huge praise too, just telling me how, how much of a good player I was and my future was bright in the game of basketball. So that was another stamp of validation by now he's a coach for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah! <laughs> I did my, my typical shoulder shoulder massage, man. It's, it's high level. It's high level massages. I'm gonna tell you guys that right now. So it's quick like that's it's like my it's like my friendly call to let you know that we're good. We're good. So I gave him the <laughs> He was like, see, you can see it in his face. Like, he, he, you can see it, like, when I gave it to him, like, he was talking, you can see him, like, you're gonna be able to see him look at me and be like, dang, bro, appreciate that. <laughs> he fell at <that> home. <laughs> oh, oh my God. During my season, I had a captain, my, my co-captain was Danley Walker, man, and we, we captained this team up man, to the fullest, man. And uh, you're an awesome dude, man. You was my, my road dog, man. We always room together for the most part, and you my sniper, man. Without you in that Cal Berkeley game, we don't get that dub, man. Like, we needed every single one of us to contribute. And from the moment, you're a shooter. So from the moment you saw they went zone, you were able to lock into your jump shot and get us kind of rolling and get the ball rolling. And then, you know, we, we fed off your energy and my energy and we did that, dude. So I know you're watching this and you, you're, you're coaching now at Chaminade. So show this to yourself, for you, your, your fiance, Jordan, everybody that's watching this, your recruits that you're recruiting, you know what I'm saying? Cause we, we gonna get the next Danley Walker and Austin Pope and Chaminade. And I know you're gonna help. Um, this is big, man. I just want to shout you out. Uh, I want to shout out Coach Kyle Milligan. Um, that's my dude. Salute, man. Big time. He's our big man coach, but also it was his first year with us at this time. So we, we gave him a good introduction to Shaman out with that. Um, coach Tim Bross. Salute. You my dude. Um, helped me out a lot in college, man. Player development, helping me mold into my game and tap into another level with film and analytically speaking and how to take my game to the next level. 
Um, coach Kabika Villa, same thing. Real home, like real, he's a local coach, Hawaiian. Texting me throughout games, bad, good games, bad games, telling me I can be the best rebounding point guard in the country if I put my mind to it. And I was that. Um, and then obviously I talk about Coach Bovere. I can only say so much, but you guys are the greatest. And that's a culmination of why we got that Mount Invitational win. A long journey, as you can see, being in the Mount Invitational. Uh, it's not just all the glitz and glams that you see on TV. There's so much more to it. I'm glad you guys were able to get a sneak peek of a little bit of the Mount Invitational. Let me know if you, if you knew some certain stuff or if you didn't. Let me know in the comments what you think. Now, after watching this video, I hope you're able to see my invitation on a whole different lens. And you know what time it is, as you know. Stay tuned for the next week episode. Thank you guys for watching. And you guys be smooth. How you be smooth shoots.